Hello, how is everyone? Can you hear me well? Can you hear me the music? Before you drink, do you have to do something with the drink? Because it's basically food. Because, no, it's okay. It's okay? Yeah. So we are in this really cute cafe that you found. Since you've been in Danang longer than me. Yeah. This cafe is in front of the building I used to live in the front yeah. there. And apart from all the benefits of the building, it was really nice because they kind of have a partnership where when you come here and buy things here, you get 10% of everything off. Oh. That was kind of cool. It's not much in terms of like the currency and all, but it's so cool. Yeah. This place is like it a little like tree house. A, yeah, exactly. It kind of like tree house vibes. I really like it. Yeah. Um, because it's secluded, but it's it's also like, I don't know. And before this, we went for a really nice uh, organic vegan shop, right? Yeah, a vegetarian restaurant. Yeah, and I recorded some like B-roll of that, so I'll show, you, show that restaurant. Uh -huh. but yeah, so actually, like, who are you? This. My name is Parashara. Yeah. I would say that I'm a yogi. Mm -hmm. It feels weird to say because I usually don't title myself as anything. I and just be. I don't know what that means, so I'm sure there's people that don't know what that is. What is a yogi? A yogi is basically someone who. You would see someone who does yoga once in a blue moon and would say that they're a yogi. Oh, okay, okay. And being a yogi is much more than just doing yoga every day. Being a yogi is also imbibing all the cosmic principles right. and allowing that to express through one's body. Yeah. So naturally, the way I eat is different than other human beings. How right. much I need to eat, how much I need to sleep. Um, so those are like the basics. Mm. You know, what I need required for my health ends up being much more but it's being gained from a different source rather than like a person who's needing to eat three times a day plus snacks plus mm -hmm. midnight snacks you know things like that okay. so and you who are you i am rihanna um i'm not any label i'm just Re rihanna mm. people know me as re ria family know me as boo boo yeah, I'm just, I'm just me. I like meeting people and people like you with interesting stories and good inviting energy, you know? Right. So and we just met yesterday. Yeah, we met yesterday. We're in Da Nang. Da Nang, yeah. Vietnam. Yeah, Da Nang, Vietnam. We'll toast to that. <laughs> um, da Nang is like a little city in towards the north of, of Vietnam and uh, I think it's the best beach city or beach town I don't know what it is but yeah maybe, maybe put your your mic up maybe like if it's more up there or, or yeah. There you go, there. yeah so Danang is like the best beach city I think and so what brought you here I'm just here because I've been living in Saigon and I needed a getaway so how did you get from so where are you originally from Panama Panama yeah. Okay. And I moved to the U.S. at the age of five. And I wasn't a citizen at the time, but then I became a citizen at, while I was in middle school. Yeah. So I spent majority of my life growing up in New York. Mm. And then once I was 20 is when I moved to India okay. to live as a monk, to manifest third eye powers, mm -hmm. and, um, just gain as much enlightenment as possible and so how how did this start what what 
what, what clicked in your mind to think I need to go to India? Obviously, New York is. East, I would say that so it's it's it was a continuation of. It was a happening. It was a continuation of something that started already a long time ago. Right, okay. Like when even at the age of six, seven, I used to go down to the basement of the house that we were living in, my mother's friend at the time. And I would just sit there in the room and I'll just start gazing whatever is in front of me. I'll start gazing and all the colors of everything that exists that are coming out. Of like the items, the auras of the items. Auras of everything. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Everything has an aura. So, um, and it's not something I saw. It's not something that someone taught me. It's just, it's just something I naturally would just do. It, it was so strange because just, um, just imagine, like, from the outside perspective, there's just this little boy. Mm. He doesn't know anything about, there's nothing about spirituality. He's just living, just living. as a child. Yeah. And goes down to the basement where it's completely dark to go and sit on the bed and just gaze like this. I don't remember. I don't even remember how long I would sit there for. At that point, it just becomes blackout. Mm. All I remember is that I would go downstairs in the complete darkness, sit, and have all the colors of everything come out. And did you think, like, so you with your mom, right? Do you, has yeah. she ever spoke to you about, do you think it's a family thing or it's just you? Um, is your mom similar? I mean, no, my mother isn't. No. I can say they're spiritual in the sense yeah. where they know that there's things going on, but they're also just doing their daily living activities at the yeah, same yeah. time. Okay. And those daily living activities are, they're guided by what's being told they need to do. Yeah. Right. So they're still influenced there to a degree. Like but I know, I, like, I spoke to my mother a little bit and like, I know like she's aware of like of like things about like basic stuff yeah that's like you know government and stuff like that but for her it's kind of like when you look at like the foundation of her she's just a person who came from a different country to, to seek a better life yeah and just worked you know? so hard and just exactly with what she got to yeah, yeah it. right like uh, someone like that wouldn't want to put themselves out there right that's the true. possibility of getting targeted and then mm. getting everything stripped away from them because no one technically really owns anything. Yeah. So that's why I'm putting myself out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> so yeah, that yeah. it kind of, you know, but I, I sometimes think about like what that could mean for the people that are close to me, like family. Yeah. You know, that's why like on social media, I never share about anyone, like anyone that I'm, that I'm with or um, even family mm -hmm. because it can end up stemming towards them in the future. Right. You know, the things that I say that everyone will agree with. And so you were in a basement. You had this, like, crazy uh, aura of powers. So then how did... So obviously everything led up to... Everything happens for a reason, and this is kind of your mission. But how did you get from there to, to go into India, like, booking a flight, and then being practicing with being like, a monk? Or mm -hmm. Well... I would say when I look in my past life, meaning because we can have many different rebirths while being in the body. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I realized that everything before I woke up, I always went towards the more spiritual route without noticing it. Right. Like every time if I was playing a video game, I always chose the mage. Mm -hmm. I always chose the wizard, the one who was using yeah. their own energy or forces in order to you know play the game yeah and then i realized that i woke up on 12 12 12 shift when i said like the world was going to end yeah and it was funny how it happened because the week that they that the 12 12 12 shift took place um right before it was about to happen there was like a survey someone was taking in the cafeteria but it's like bored. It's like, do you think the world is going to end? And there's like, yes and no. And everyone so far has tallied no. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I always love supporting all sides. I don't like to just take any side, even if I feel like logically true, I still wanted to take the other side. Yeah. 
And so I checked, I was the only one who checked no, uh, yes, compared to the whole entire school. And then once the 12, 12, 12 shift came, something just like happened mixed. in me yeah. that I started just, it literally started off with like a Google search. And it was these exact same words. What can I do with my own energy? Mm. And then that's when I started like, that's when I started learning about um, like energy and um, then like within the first few months I became a witch. Okay. So I like got into like witchcraft basically. Um, nothing crazy. Like it was, it was I, li I really liked the aesthetic of it. Yeah. You know, it was like I had like a nice oak wand. Nicely oh. crafted with like a copper that was intertwined you a, a amethyst at the bottom. No, I got it from oh. artists who made it. That's so cool. You no, know, so it. nice. And I had like a little cauldron, a little skull, you know, for ancestors and this and that. And I became part of a coven. But the thing about the coven is that you had to go to their meetings consistently in order for them to take you in as a pupil so wow. you can start studying. And I was like, that's too much work for me. Yeah. So I dropped it. And then I literally just did the same thing. What can I do with my own energy? And then the next results I found was, then I started learning about chakras. Yeah, that's yeah, when yeah. I found out about chakra, third eye and stuff. And then that's yeah. when I started um, practicing with, with chakras. So I started doing a very specific meditation. And within three days, I immediately activated my third eye. It could have been activated already. It How was already because know? I was you seeing auras. And that's, so if you see auras, you think that's a sign of you having your fun. Well, that's the funny thing. I never even knew I was seeing auras. I thought it was just something with my vision. When I got much older and I was like around the age of nine, one time I was putting like red bed sheets on my bed. The opposite color of red is green. Yes. So naturally the aura color of um, the bed sheets were red. And I was putting on the bed sheets and I was like so happy because I loved the color red at the time. And then I be completely became blind with the color green. It's mm. not like everything looked green. Like if yeah. this was swinging, I can specifically see that swinging and that's also green. No, I w it was like if someone masked my face with a green screen right. and I could not see through it. Mm. It was just pure green. And I was going to my mother's room and I was like, I, I, was, I had my eyes open, but I couldn't, all I thought it was green. I was trying to move around. I was like, mom, I, all I could, uh, I, I'm, I'm like, I can't see, I can't see. All I can see is green. And, you know, coming from a mother, you know, she's just thinking like, oh, my child is just acting weird again. Yeah. And she was like, here, take your medication. Like, what, med what medicine was she um, It was because I was seen as a special child. Right, okay. So because of that, you know, it's very common. They would like separate you from the regular kids and then they'll test you in the regular classes in the future. I was also like would get into fights sometimes because I was from a different country where English wasn't the first language I learned, so but I knew English on? also. Yeah, because I didn't know Spanish. Oh. So I first was went into a Spanish school. Right. But then it was like, oh, you barely even know Spanish, but like in Panama, you speak Eng Spanish and English. Mm. So, uh, I was like, yeah, she just said take your medication, oh, and. That's sad. And I was, and I just, you know, but, and then it started dimming down, started dimming down, like okay. the, the, the green. So you think the medicine is to stop people with these powers? Do you, um, think like spe do you think like special kids actually have this sort of like more percentage of their brain unlocked or higher vibrations? Well, naturally coming from a holistic civilization um, in another star system mm -hmm. where they're naturally um, not really a, compatible vibrational compatible with the vibration down here right. it's much slower down here more heavy down here, you know um and then i also used to have like a lot of dreams i used to have astral project all the time yeah I, fly I everywhere i would climb to the top of the playground and jump off purposely right before i hit the ground i'll start flying but over the years i started getting a repetitive dream almost okay. every night of me just falling from a cliff, falling, 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 falling. And right when I'm about to hit the ground, 
I just like jump out of my bed, literally jump out of my bed. I think I've had that. Like dream if I had once. like the impact of it physically happening, it would happen for so many years. And I think a part of it, all the way to high school actually. And I think a part of it was something was declining that I wasn't aware of. Mm. Could have been my consciousness, could have been something else. I don't know. Something was declining that where I wasn't really um, flying anymore. When I went to sleep, I was just falling. Then I started flying again when I, after I graduated high school, I started having um, out of body experiences again, much mm -hmm. frequently again. And even things like lucid dreaming, but all those were accidents. I didn't even knew I knew how to see auras. I just thought it was, no I thought, I, I, I thought normal. it was just normal vision. Like, I can be there in class, just looking at the teacher, them speaking, and I see, like, the color around them, and I'm thinking that it's just normal. So, you said that my aura was what? Um, you have an outline of rainbow, and the inside of your hand is aquamarine. Aquamarine. Yeah. It's so like, kind of like this color? Much lighter. It's lighter. This is not even aquamarine. It's like, like, like a dark teal. Yeah, turquoise. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Huh. But, um, yeah, so I found out that I was seeing auras all that time when I went to, like, my fir very first mentor was an archangel teacher, tarot card reader. And I went to her, and she did my reading, and stuff like that. And then I went to a workshop of hers about seeing auras. She mm -hmm. said, everyone wear white. Me, I had white shoes, white, te white, white pants, white top, mm -hmm. white tank top, white hat. And people just went there with, like, a white shirt. And that's it. Everything else was like jeans or something else. You just went full out. Like, full out white. And I, mean, I, I like a lot of solid colors, but also pastel, yeah. but a lot of light colors. And uh, I do have some leads and information as to why. Okay. Because there is a specific um, race that all of their kind is all, like they're all like white, not in terms of ethnicity or race. But they're just, yeah. they're just, they're just how they are. Right. They're all white. They like to incarnate as a melanin person when they, re when they incarnate here. Okay, on, so on they're, not from Earth. This, they're not from this planet. Mm -hmm. okay. They like to come here and reincarnate as, um, as a person of color. Okay. Because it's something they never experienced before. And a lot of the things that they like, I found myself liking. Even all the way down to clothes as well. So, uh, so you think you're one of them? Possibly. Mm. I haven't came to a conclusion yet because I, I'm waiting to see. But there are many star seeds from many different races, and a lot of those um, other humans, just other humans, okay, what, what are are, are watching mean? watching over their star seeds, star family um, here on planet Earth. Star seeds meaning star seeds meaning um, that our souls have lived on. Other civ in other civilizations and mm. other star systems okay. that are of higher vibration, higher frequency. Yeah. So that's the reason why sometimes we can feel a bit alien when mm. we're here, because we don't. There's 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 not a really great compatibility with where we just came from and then <laughs> and where yeah. we where we chose to come here. You, know? you think you chose to come here? Everyone chose to come here. Do you know the reason why? Yeah, because this is where all the action is. <laughs> Really, <laughs> when the, while in the body is we perceive it as pain, this and that, but we get the most expansion here. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. It's like um, time to grow and. To it's kind of like think of it as like going like on a trip. Like, yeah. Damn, I'm ready, like you know, it's, 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 it's like that. It's like a game, kind of. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so. But yeah, so yeah, basically, I was doing many different things. I started like a secret circle in high school. I was teaching a lot of my. Like friends my peers mm -hmm. in school taking them to the woods having them meditate even my partner i had her meditate have them all experiencing their third eye they started seeing different things and everything like that get it going um teach them how to see the difference between before and after how much their aura expands when they meditate so i make them do a test before yeah logically for them physically to see how much their aura is how big it is after meditation, um, I had them use a pendulum mm -hmm. 
okay. to ask if they were in that person's aura. You may be like a few feet away without meditation. After they met, after I had them do meditation, um, they, one of them went all the way down the hill. That's how big a person's aura got. Well, down when, the hill. When I kept, they kept asking, am I in this person's aura? They kept saying yes, all the way down the hill of the town. What? So showing them how much uh, meditating and other spiritual practices yeah. actually impact them. Um, so I was doing that, teaching a lot of kids my age. And then I kind of, I was like charging my phone with my third eye when it's dead, what? Uh, messing with like electricity and stuff like that. I never was successfully during that time able to like move things, but I practiced that also. Can you move things now? Yeah. Okay. But and the only way to see that is if you're also... No. So you no. could do it now and I could see it? Well, we do have a coconut. We could do it. Really? Yeah. But I have a lot of recordings too on my YouTube channel too. Okay. Even like remotely doing it, but... I kind of felt like I was got stuck at it like one point. Like I reached mm. a cap mm. because I was like, okay, I want to be able to know what else I can do with my third eye. I'm just like practicing this, but I didn't, I'm like, what else is there now? Yeah. So then my guru appeared, like basically how we look at it is he was ready to work with me. So he put his attention on me. That's me finding him. Right. Like that. Okay. So I found him, or he found me, via online, um, through just like a video that I saw. Yeah. And I dropped everything. I dropped the career I had as an insurance agent. I dropped the car that broke down. I dropped the house I was going to rent out, everything. And I, I only had enough money to just travel and go back in a little bit of pocket money. And I just went straight to India. Wow. Um, and it was America? my first time traveling alone. And you went, where did you go? Um, initially, there is a, a kind of village that's right outside of Bengaluru, okay. which is called Karataka. Oh, no. I think it's Karataka. It's like right next to Canada, which they speak Canada, but okay. it's not Canada. It's Canada. It's with a K. Canada. Yeah. Okay. And that's where I spend majority of my time, but then... I started traveling to other ashrams, doing other missions, and eventually working with the United Nations as well during that time. And so eventually after going through all those processes, mutation, and those things, we can cover all more details in the future about why I did those processes, what kind of mutations those were. Um, once it was 20... The ending of 2018 to 2019, what? we were training for the release of the virus before them releasing the virus. COVID? Yeah, we were training for it. So, so you, was, all, you, all, sorry, you all knew that it was coming? Yeah, yeah. He told us in 2018, no matter where you are, just make sure you stay alive and don't die. 2018. Mm -hmm. And so he, we were training. We got uh, initiated into being, having immunity towards poison. Okay. So we can like consume poison now, no problem. Yeah. Um, and cool. other things that may have poison in it, like in the food productivity mm -hmm. and stuff, uh, in the food productivity, uh, it will have a less of effect on me compared to other people. Mm -hmm. And then we were being trained to do everything in an isolated, specific locations without going anywhere, yeah. without being able to leave. And that was during the same time that I started um, starting my process of becoming immortal. So, which was the whole 21 months of only liquids, silence, celibacy, so living as a monk. We had a kavi, orange clothing, living in temple grounds. And we were training that whole entire time, doing everything in one room, in one building, one floor. So that way, when the virus was released, there wouldn't be such a shock yeah. for us. Oh. So yeah. And how how was that aware for him to know that there was a virus coming? Was that what? How did he know that there was a virus coming? He's an avatar. He's an avatar. He knows everything. Did you have any Im like do you have any pictures or anything? Or you have no phone, nothing? Do you have any images of you when you're up and living in as a monk? Oh yeah. Tons. Videos. 
That's, I, I made videos during that time too. Okay. So videos and yeah, photos. Okay. Yeah. I was even in the newspaper when I was at the temple, and I have a picture of that. But I should have gotten a copy, yeah, and gotten it laminated should, or something. Uh, but who knows? Maybe I'll be able to find a copy of the productive date or have them printed out in the future. Or go to the publishing, mm -hmm. have them printed out for like history sakes. And so, whilst being there. So let's explain like the markings on your face. Is there anything to do with what you learned whilst being in India? Or is that just the start? On a basic level, before eating, you would put basma. Basma is this the white thing? Basma or vibhuti, it's okay. called in Sanskrit. But in English, you'll call it holy ash. Okay. And it means that the body is temporary. It mm. represents that the body is temporary. And the red mark here, usually you would see that circle, and it's usually called bindi. bindi yeah. And mine is spiked like this. It's because like a teardrop. Exactly, kind of, because yeah. it's been uh, activated or awakened. Mm. So one who has manifested any of the 463 powers consistently 21 times and within one sitting that is when we get initiated into next level which is it's showing that up. we have you know fully activated the third eye yeah and it's called trina tilak trina, trina means trina. three and tilak means eye meaning third eye, third eye. Mm. so and okay so i noticed you have like a lot of gold rather than silver is there a reason behind that too yes like for example if you wanted to have any toe rings like i have you yeah, would wear silver, silver because gold is associated with lakshmi and lakshmi is the goddess of wealth okay so it would be a disrespect to have gold on your feet or anywhere mm. that may be inappropriate because it's lakshmi same thing like with rudraksha you wouldn't have it on your feet. Okay. And you know there's an association when it comes to feet and things in, you know, in India. Um, very sacred association. Yeah. And the earrings, I think even if it's smaller earrings, it's fine. When you're wearing earrings, the science behind it is that when there's loud sounds, which is coming in the form of waves, yeah. um, they act as buffers for loud sounds that may be harmful for your ears yeah. it reduces the impact so that your ears don't get damaged hmm. having gold nose piercing specifically in these spots allows all the air that you inhale to be purified because gold purifies a lot of things oh, yeah. and one of the things that purifies is air so when you are inhaling and you have gold piercings here all of the oxygen i'm inhaling no matter where i am is getting purified as best as possible makes sense Hmm. So you can actually change mine to gold? Hmm? You can actually change mine to gold? I think you should change yours to gold. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And same thing with like Vegeta's. Um, we don't call it dreadlocks because dreadlocks is um, it's more of an insult from the British. Because when they invaded India and they saw this kind of hair, okay. they thought, oh, what dreadful hair. Oh. It's dreadful. Every time a person says dreadlock, they're calling, they're insulting oh someone's hair. I did not know that. That's why I, if anyone is not familiar with jetas, I call it then locks, but then not locks. dreadlocks because it's not dreadful. I never knew that. You never noticed it, but it's no. all in the words. When was that? When was the? When was the first time they discovered? I mean, that's when they invaded India. When was yeah, that? They, I don't remember. Oh, I I don't remember the date. Yeah. I know a lot of the history, but I don't know a lot. I'm not like a, you know, a historian in a way. But yeah, they saw it as a very dreadful thing. And Jetas, because Jetas originally is from India. Like if you look at Shiva, that's what he has. It's exactly like this long Jetas with the crescent moon, Chandra, because he helped Chandra to remove the majority of the curse that he had. Um, given to him from Daksha from making all of his daughters upset and that's why it's part of like Shiva put him in his Jatta due to his devotion that is the artificially placed moon 
Right, yeah, I remember you said this. Mm -hmm. So the moon we can see right now is, when you say artificially placed. Yes. Elaborate, because I don't understand. You think someone physically put it there or like something, it's like graphic there? Like, I don't understand. Well, it's, 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 it's there. physically there, but it's used for different, it's used for different purposes. Some is for some entities that are here. Entities meaning like governments mm. that has no, it's like, so for example, you have the U.S. government, but then you have like the galactic U.S. government. It's like that, where the U.S. government only like the implants, not implants, but only the people who is controlling all the stuff from the top knows about it. And everything down below doesn't know anything about all the galactic things that are happening with all the countries and everything. Okay. So, but yeah, when did, when did you wake up? Me? For me, it was 12, 12, 12. Well, I might have, okay, no, I was probably 20 in 2020, 21 or, yeah, I'd say 21 or 22. Yeah, I was like 17, 18 or 17, 20, 18. I have a friend that's at the time was very um, knowledgeable about all this mm -hmm. things and like higher in your vibrations and things. And she was, she was teaching me and then I was like, Oh, it all makes sense. From, from young, I've always been into drawn to like mag magic, as you can say, of magic. And, but now I'm, I realize that it's just the truth, but the matrix is like this. So when I started to learn about this, I started actual projecting. I started meditating every day. And I, I also like got these kind of colors, but I was, I don't think to the level of you. And um, yeah, people always tell me, oh, you're like an alien. You're not from this world stuff. I don't think I am either, but I'm still on the journey. I wouldn't say I'm like fully uh, awake. At one point when I was 17, I was meditating every day. I was isolating myself in a room. People would think I was crazy. I just had like scribbles of like these thoughts that were coming to my mind about where we are and what life is. And now I realized I wasn't really crazy. It was just the truth. Yeah. But yeah, like I used to meditate and astral project. And one like it's one time I, me and my friend tried to join projections, but we didn't do it right. So I ended up just being my, like by me. I started by like lying flat on my bed, awake, closing my eyes. I think I put some sort of like astral projection sound on or on YouTube or something. Mm -hmm. And then slowly like it felt warm and like tingly and I was out of my body and I was, I don't know how this even worked. I can't do it now. This is the issue. I can't do it now. I don't know how I got to that level of, I don't know, higher vibrations of consciousness. But I just remember that I was like bouncing over planets with my friend that gave me all this knowledge. Yeah. So I think that's when I woke, but slowly going back up but it's gone it's gone like this i also feel like a shift in the universe right now um which is forcing me to get back to that state mm. but yeah i mean it's interesting because i remember even before that 12 12 12 shift when i woke up i remember i was sleepwalking mm. and I remember at one point my dad came in a room. I was probably like 12 or 11. Mm -hmm. And he would come in the room to check on me to make sure that I didn't leave the TV on. Didn't fall asleep with the TV on. And he would open the door and he's like, couldn't even open it. He looked behind the door and it's me like crawled up in a ball, like with my hand against the, on the, the doorknob and it, it's like this that happened like a few times of sleepwalking like that never fully leaving my room it's kind of scary. but doing things like in my room while i was sleeping yeah so when during that time i was visibly seeing all of the demonic things that was happening in the music industry and stuff even though i didn't even have the 12 12 12 shift yet that was only 12 but I was doing a bunch of research at the, at the age of 12 and 11 and 10 years old and trying to convince my mother. I was like, mom, like this is happening. 
in the industry and this and that. And do you think you were crazy? She, Give you medicine again? No, it was more like she would listen to me. She okay. would listen to me. But I don't think like she was fully convinced. Because even though they made it obvious, they didn't make it as obvious as they make it now. Now it's crazy. You but know? it's like, so they can excuse it as we're just playing. It's just art. Yeah, yeah. Or we're playing. You think this, so it makes us money. They can excuse it in a way. Yeah. But. And, oh, they know how to troll people. Yeah, but it's exactly. like How much trolling it can do to the point where it's kind of like, <laughs> why are they trolling with just this? You know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's. I remember all of that and trying to convince my family, my mother especially and my grandmother about um, about this. But that only ever came to me, like me knowing all of that info during that time. And then it kind of died down because I wasn't able to convince them, but I knew it. I used to take, like even in music videos, when they used to flash like different demons mm -hmm. and stuff, um, but it was so fast that you couldn't see it. I used to like specifically pause the music video you just saw it anyway. to, to find it and then screenshot it. Yeah, I show the different images that they're flashing in people's face where the subconscious mind is able to digest that. But you logically can't, you can't see it fast enough to know that you're being exposed to, to a ritual or exposed to things. Mm. So yeah, that's, that's part of it during that time at least even though i didn't have i can say though i guess the awakening process has always been happening yeah but the fully being awake would have been the tough 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 shifts yeah I, I guess like i've always been i know within myself i've been different um, i wouldn't i don't know if I, I think i'm awake now but not to, obviously not to my full potential i think i've always been there Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Like you were telling me, like some people are here as empty vessels, or what you say. Well, they're just they're just what people would call them sometimes, like NPCs. Yeah, NPCs. You know, easily easy for actual and lower astral entities to take over and be an issue for star seeds that are here. Yeah. Um, so that they end up gaining distractions, burdens, um, and many other things. So that they don't actually spend the time doing what they really truly want to be doing with mm -hmm. their life yeah. because now they have this person nagging them or distracting them or creating issues or just whatever the case may be and so i haven't actually said so what do you do i am a vedic astrologer so not western astrology but vedic yeah. astrology so straight from india I'm a super manifester coach or manifestor, manifestor coach through the parent company Glimpses Astrology. There's the program Omnipotence where I teach people how to manifest anything they want with ease and fast. Then I'm also a, I have an SMMA, so social media marketing, where I help coaches, therapists, and teachers gain more clients yeah. with whatever services like program classes that they're having or even workshops, whether it's locally or online. Yeah. And I've helped with people who are very seasoned in business. And I've also helped people who never done business before and was stuck at a yoga studio, giving the percentage to the studio. And I was like, instead of me bringing clients to the studio for your classes, why not you just start your own yoga online yoga yeah. classes and for her first class she didn't have much money so i only had a, a small budget of like 300 dollars. but because my copy and i have a very specific formula because my copy and my process to create the images and everything was so good even with just that amount of budget i was able to bring 183 people to her first class yeah it's um, really yeah it's really really good and you times that by something as simple as I think it was like 90 something or, or even between somewhere between 60 to 90 something dollars. And you multiply that by 180 yeah, that's minimum. Amazing. That's, that's, pretty good. that's pretty good. Yeah. And so what can you tell me and whoever's listening about the difference between Western and is it Verdict? 
because Vedic. Vedic. Because when you research, I tried to research it today, and you can't find anything. You can find your chart, but you don't. Whereas in Western, for example, you go on an app and it has everything for you. You can't do that with this astrology. So is it right. you only find the knowledge from a, someone who? Like, how did you? So it's all specifically from the scriptures. If something cannot be referred to an original text, then it's hard to it's hard to really know if it's more based on someone else's opinion mm. or a trend of ideas, or if it's actually something that's been credible for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah. So with Vedic astrology or even any astrology, it's really hard to even produce your own chart by yourself because the software I use is a paid software. I paid a few hundred dollars for that software. Mm -hmm. And it's what the software all best astrologers use in the world. But if you were to go to 10 different websites, you would find your chart. Maybe three of them are the same and the rest are like different because they're all not accurate. And none of them are accurate. A lot of them are not accurate because unless they are having enough money to make sure that everything in, cos in the cosmos is always expanding, meaning that it's always changing. It's not always in the same exact place. So because of that, if they don't update their software, they're giving you outdated calculations. Yeah. Remember, everything is calculations. So if it's not updated, what's currently happening, and happening cosmically, then you're going to get uh, wrong information about your chart. That's why you can go to so many different websites and get different results, different signs, different placements, different, uh, you know, everything. And that's also why it's important to for a person to have their birth time but if they don't have their birth time it's okay because i was taught how to be able to read someone's chart if they don't have their birth time but it's really nice to have the birth time because then i can see very specific things like their nakshatras and other things like that but the difference mainly is the western calendar is used in western astrology is one of the differences apart from the fact that it's been made as a pop culture uh, astrology yeah. kind of thing where it really dilutes the science of astrology, making it something where people are saying that, oh, I really feel the Scorpio energy and that doesn't exist. Because let's say if the moon was transiting in Scorpio right now, you're not only feeling that, you're feeling everything that's happening in the, in the cosmos, yeah, everything. Um, and also how it's affecting that individual is based on where that sign is and their chart to be able to see how that is being influenced in their life. Like when people say, oh, like Mercury retrograde, prepare. Mercury, any retrograde, they only affect mi uh, maximum 30% of the population. Oh. And even then, if it is affecting the, the, within that 30% of the people, they need to see where that placement is in their chart in order to tell which area it's affecting them in. Mm. It can't just be vague where it's like, oh, okay, this is communication messed up for everyone. It'll affect everyone differently. Yeah. So let's say like, yeah, let's say via communication Mercury, but if it's transiting, let's say in Taurus and Taurus is in your seventh house, that means it's transiting that retrograde in your seventh house then you might end up encountering some communication with your partner. Yeah. Because that's, that's the placement of your partner is. Or communication with um, other people, people that you meet. Like you might say something like uh, 150 when you meant to say 1250. Mm -hmm. You know, like something like that. Um, so those kind of things can happen. But that's one of the differences. The other difference is that the Western calendar is a stagnant calendar it doesn't change doesn't along change. with the cosmology it's always staying in fixed dates and only change one day per year and for some reason thanksgiving is always on the same day of the week but um <laughs> um yeah as you see in the east celebrations are always on different dates of the year yeah it makes more sense because it's following the actual calendar like if you look at what the original calendar is 
the calendar in the West is for economic purposes. It's just so that they can yeah. enslave people and have them work nine to five and all that stuff for economic purposes. But in the East, when you look at the calendar that was used a long time ago, it was this kind of pedestal with numbers and numerous frequencies. And it had like a little triangle in the middle. And based on that, they had to place it in a very specific spot because of coordinates, because again, calculations. And like that, they were able to tell what date of the day, the day, what day it is, the date of the year, what year it is, what year they are in just the whole period of this current era. They use that. So the whole Western calendar is even a new thing. It's not, it doesn't even like, but it is based on astrology. The Western is they, they, The calendar they created, they're using astrology to enslave people. So like, for example, Friday, majority of the time, is a day that people get paid. Yeah. Friday is ruled by Shukra, which is Venus. Venus rules the seventh house, but it has Karakas. Each house has Karakas, and it can have more than one Karaka. A Karaka means significator. What does it signify? In the eleventh house, one of the Karakas it has is Venus. And why is Venus a Karaka? in the 11th house because it's the house right after your career right. means the liquidation what you're getting in return from the karma that you're fulfilling in society so that house is all about liquidation due to venus means what venus is all about liquidation liquid money you're getting your liquid gains cashed out to you on friday yeah. the day that the venus rules that day so, so like if a person so. ever wants to um, reconcile their romantic relationship then they should wait till friday to do it because it'll be most beneficial now it can get more specific where based on the time that the sun is rising i can see when is venus hours going to be there'll be two or three times available in a day of one hour where venus is going to be most prominent during those hours and i can even give that as a remedy as an Okay, on Friday, during these three times, you can go to your partner and patch things up. So, you, you mean to someone? So, everyone is different, though. So that's for, for me, everyone. That's for everyone. Because we're all living on that Friday. Okay. It applies to all of us. That's just the energy of that day. So, your, so your age would be very different. Western age is completely wrong, basically. Western age? Yeah. Like so, my in terms age of right now... Okay. That's wrong. You, I remember you said something to well, me yesterday about you get stuck. You can get stuck in the age. Well, what I was implying was your age is correct, but think about it less. Just let it go. This. Okay. Because the more you remember that you're aging, ages you. So just yeah, let right. it go. Because if you allow age a number to brainwash you into thinking that you're getting older and oh, older and older yeah. then you'll n have no brain to wash you'll literally have no more of a brain you'll just be like allowing yourself to age at a, such a pace right, right. you know so you no know, you have the right age but when people are celebrating their birthday via the western calendar their birthday could have just passed already mm -hmm. or their birthday could be coming up uh in the near future it could have passed two days ago because again uh your birthday is not when the sun is returning on a specific date of the western calendar your birthday is under the star that you were the star constellation that you were born under okay so when the moon returns to that star that is when your birthday is again this makes so much sense yeah. it's annoying that they can brainwash so fast yeah Easy. but again the ones a lot of the ones who are brainwashed are just a lot of easily influence people right you yeah know? where no matter what you say to them they'll just be stuck on the same thing and you know a lot about food as well yeah so remember you told me that i should cut onions out and garlic and mushrooms and things onion garlic mushrooms yeast root things that come from gluten root. you can eat root vegetables I don't eat it because I want to be as non-violent. I want to live yeah. as non-violent as possible, okay. putting in this body. That's all. Mm -hmm. So, but 
but at the same time, how much other people eat is three times more than how much I eat. So it's easier for me because I only need to think about once a day. Whereas for other people, they're thinking about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you said that you don't, so you eat once a day and you seem to be very healthy and muscly. And you said that's to do with the ox oxygen, right? I can say increase of oxygen in my body is a byproduct of my lifestyle. But increasing oxygen is not the objective, but it's a byproduct of my lifestyle and the way I live and eat. But yes, of course, uh, because it's a byproduct, that also has a lot of benefits as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I never, I never went to the gym uh, to like work out and this and that. Mm -hmm. um, I never had the interest. I, I thought about it, but I just it didn't interest me. So you just this ripped from being so high in vibrations and oxygen, and also not being selfish with my own strength. I share my strength with everyone, whoever needs it. And you said that you're immortal. Do you mean you as your, your soul? Well, we're all immortal. Our energy. On, 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 a, on a core level, we're all immortal. Yeah. yeah. We, we can't die. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I will be here for a minimum 300 years. Okay. There are villages in India where if a person dies at 200, it's considered premature death. Right now, it's premature, premature death. If they die at 200 there's so i already like i already threw away all this, the the conditioning i will be here for minimum 300 years and if i want this body yeah yeah and if i want to live because i have a lot to do here but if i i need to build a whole empire i need to build a whole clan family structure where we're able to pass down a lineage so that way it's not easily influenced with our own principles um concepts everything all of us living as god mm -hmm. people can see that as a well how would that work if each of you are seeing each other as god it's the that's what living enlightenment is when you treat others as god and they treat you as god like that and what is god to you hmm Good question. Everything, everything that exists and everything that doesn't exist. Okay. And you think God is a person, a thing, or just an energy? All of us are God. We're just oh. a... You know, this is one funny thing that I came up with. It, 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 it got downloaded into me two years ago. I was like, if God is this big energetic... You know, the energy it is, you know, cosmic is, right? And if it made many of hymns, then everyone that, everything that he made is God. So Doesn't that make sense? God, yeah. How is it impossible for me to take pieces of myself and put them in their own delusion and say, they're not me? They are me. Yeah. Every single thing that has been made that is that exists as here is God. So you think that God was a... in my head I'm stuck on like if God is a person that created this or created God, what's your idea on that? Hmm? What's your idea on so you, you said that God created us, so then everyone is God. But what created God? In your in your mind that's where we start getting into the vedic scriptures speaking about the there is a word that i would recommend all of you to research it's called garba g-a-r-b-h-a i think it's like that and that speaks about the womb the the egg the womb the cosmic womb, the cosmic egg. And that would be a better place to find a credible translation and to read and study off of that. Because it's way too vast for me to go ahead and touch on that. But on a basic level, 
if everything, no, not even if, on a basic level, everything is made of energy. Mm -hmm. This glass, my leg, it's all the same energy all the way down to an atomic level and even smaller than that. So that also includes God. So everything's God. Yeah. And we are the same quality. You and God is the same quality. It's just the quantity is different. This quantity is much larger. Your quantity, as per you perceive in his body, is much smaller. But same quality. Same cup of water. He just poured some water in this glass, and now you're existing in that glass. Yeah. It's the same water. It's just the quantity is less. Hmm. When did you stop eating meat? And I just, May 15, 2017. And what clicked to you? Was that before you went to India? That was the day I went to India. Oh, the day you went to India? I only had a month when I decided. I only had a month to get my visa in time. I have a 10 year visa. Um, and to get everything that I had, no money, nothing. And I had a month to make it all happen. I never put more, more energy into anything in my life than going. It was like do or die. My mother canceled my flight, so I had to like rebook a flight. Like she didn't it was want you to go. She was afraid I was gonna get kidnapped. Yeah. First of all, I never traveled alone before, and second of all, she just came from she went to Panama to the U.S. and that's all she knows in life. So she's seeing like, oh, my son going to India, and she's thinking like the only thing she can think in her head is what's been exposed to her about India. So she's thinking, oh no, he's gonna go there and get kidnapped. And, yeah. When you really think about it, like put yourself in the shoes of like someone who's like has been living a normal life and then they think of like india they just probably think of like savages or something who like, knows probably like researched bad things she did research and found a lot of stuff a lot of fake stuff um that wasn't true because when i went there what that, that wasn't what was happening yeah and but that was all the attacks that happens with the matrix as well but but yeah so you have a lot to say you have to do like a part two part three yeah we we'll have to do a part two things. Never ending parts. Yeah, yeah. Well well I'll what I'll do in the title I'll put your name or something. Okay. Like with you know, your name and then Yeah. That way people know that it's with us again. They may they may like this duo more than others or just yeah. more than just by myself. And so. I'll I'll make sure to I thought I'd add in some real footage of like you in India and it'll be really interesting like visually. Mm. Yeah, I have those videos of you and but, okay, if you had to say anything to people watching, what, what would you say? Anything. Don't believe anything. <laughs> Don't believe anything anyone tells you out there. Do extensive research for yourself because even where you're researching, you're still researching based on the information that they're making available to you. So you're going to need to find independent researchers, researchers that don't have a bias. That's not part of the matrix. Um, and, but what I will say is that you're not an orphan. You're not here in this like alone feeling like you're making a bunch of mistakes. You're exactly where you are and where you need to be. Make sure that you keep boundaries for yourself. Don't try to keep boundaries for other people. Because they're going to cross it whether they want to or not. Yeah. Create boundaries for yourself. Protect your energy. And most of all, be as healthy as possible that you can be. And create a plan to get rich as soon as possible. Because they've done a very good job of implanting poverty consciousness amongst the spiritual community. And it's keeping a lot of spiritual people from reaching their highest potential, their mission here on planet Earth. Do you not think that they, sorry, do you not think that they will, they see this, those leaders, matrix people, and target you? For giving they the only target people who has a big enough influence. Right now, even though I have a lot of audience, yeah. it's not compared to other people with millions and millions and millions. And so the people with millions and millions and millions, won't they be getting people at their door saying, don't say this, don't say that? Like, well, they do that through sponsorships. Okay. Because when you get sponsorship, they tell you you're only allowed to say these things. Right. Hmm. That's how sponsorships work. 
So That's those the, people are really then under the matrix. Well, we'll though. give you a million. You just can't mention and talk about these things. That's how they do it. That's why there's a lot of channels, a lot of um, profiles where they make it very clear that they are fully uncensored. And because of this, um, they're not able to have as many sponsorships. Mm -hmm. um, and they're supported by their audience. Mm -hmm. But either way, you can't just depend on a social media platform because they can just take you off and then you don't have any money. You need to create yeah. your own thing, your own. For me, I'm creating my own clan. I already have a team lead that we've been doing. We're going through this whole process for years. And in the future, we'll accept people to join. Um, but we, uh, we have a clan that basically allows us to shoot ourselves from the different agendas and um, imposing threats that they're trying to do towards the children and other people through the school system. So basically where we'll have our own concepts, our own principles that we follow as a household. And it's gonna be a big property, a big property, big land, different houses, houses, buildings and everything. Um, you know where? I don't know where yet. I don't know where yet, no. but either way, it's going to be a place where we feel the legal system is most fair as possible and also the least influence as per from the least influence from the west because all the everything that is set as a standard in the west is kind of spreading like a disease to all the other countries um who knows it may be romania um or Why not India? Where it all started? The drug trafficking mafias has a lot of stronghold in every country. Yeah. But they're pretty good. You know, it's really easy for them to pay some mindless, senseless human beings uh, to go and... I mean, there's a lot of footage where a lot of monks, they're getting beat to death in the street. So because they're and, and you see the police he's not really doing much and he's there, there in the video they want because they're, they're most likely getting paid yeah want to beat anyone who's practicing any of the, the the old traditions so even a lot of sadhus monks and stuff getting arrested and stuff with stupid excuses as to why uh, or beating them to death and things like this so it runs deeps more it runs more deep than just like you know being anywhere it really depends on where we choose but for now we have a clan mm -hmm. of i would say maybe around i would say under 10 people and our main goal is creating all of our assets our um, businesses getting used to being rich yeah. even now i'm still getting used to the letting go of that feeling of like not needing to be concerned about money anymore mm. it's very interesting because now that it's actually a reality it's kind of like oh but i still feel this feeling of like of lack but i have i don't need to feel lack but what allowed me to push myself to manifest this was me flying here